So hello, my name is Rosalinda and thank you for watching. I would like to start by saying thank you to Neil Gibson and Ruth Davey for the invitation. To be honest, I am very happy with this opportunity, not only because it means the recognition of my work, but also because it represents a great challenge for me. I really need to push myself into the digital world. So I hope you like it. And also, I'm sorry for reading, but I'm Portuguese. I'm here to present you the most recent project I developed and that it's actually becoming to be my life project. It is called Shfoku, Photography and Wellbeing. But let me introduce myself first. As I told you, my name is Rosalinda and I am a psychologist from Portugal. Although I do have a clinical background, I've been working within the social field all my life. Working and dealing with people from so many different backgrounds always gave me a sense of having the need to see mental health through a political point of view. And I always felt that being an office psychologist maybe was not enough to reach the people I work with. John Berger said, if we can see the present clearly enough, we shall ask the right questions of the past. Indeed, as a person, I was always very committed to discover how could I help, let's say, to change the world, make it a better place. As soon as I understood I could not do it by politics, it was maybe why I've become a, a psychologist. And along the way, I felt the urge to focus myself on helping people to learn how to self-promote well-being instead of only focusing on illness. But how could I make it happen? Let me tell you how I discover photography by inviting you into the simple exercise. So if you like, let's take a few moments looking at this picture. In Portuguese, we say olhar com olhos de ver which means something like you use your eyes to really see, to really go into it. So let's go into it for a few moments. A few questions might help to explore this image. Like, which details can you see? Can you look at the colors, light, shadows? warm and cold. Maybe you can try to explore its textures, lines, patterns. And what about what it is in the picture? I mean, what can you identify? Can you maybe note some objects? or people in it? What are they? Who are they? Now what about what is not in the picture? Like, where is this taking place? Who else might be there? When? Who do you think took this photograph and why? Can you note what feels like within you when you look at this picture? This picture was taken during the first photo voice project I developed. During my master thesis, I was looking to investigate well-being with elderly people 
living in the retirement home I was working at the time. The participants named the project Nunca Pensei Ser Artista. Never thought I am an artist. People with more than 80 years old, not able to read or write, were using photography for three months to express themselves about what was meaningful to them in relationship with their well-being. This picture was shot by the owner of the boot. She was 88 years old at the time and was saying something like, when I sit myself in here, I th I'm thinking, how will I ever do photography? I had never even seen a camera before. I always felt that the only way we can really change society is by changing power. As proposed by Paul Freire, only the oppressed person can change his, his reality, not the oppressor. But how can an oppressed person have such an energy or will? My father is an amateur photographer since ever, and because of that, Photography has been in my life since always. So for me to discover photography as a way to promote well-being, self-knowledge, self-development was truly something. Finally, my life path made sense. I was discovering an easy and fun method of working with people that I could really use and understand. In fact, being creative is fundamental to human existence. We need to create. And with art, we can explore emotions, stories, and identities. I believe that the only way we can promote a true democracy is to promote knowledge and mental health. But can we do so by using non-formal learning? And can we do it by using photography? The idea is that we can only be able to promote change and build a path to freedom if we can think, reflect, and act responsibly. And we can only do so if we have mental health. As I understood during my practice, the existence of a safe space is mandatory. When we feel safe and comfortable, we can try. We are not anxious or afraid. We feel like we can experience the uncomfortable. We can choose to be creative, being funny, trying new things. We can start to transform ourselves. And by that, we get in touch with our own emotions and feelings and learn with it. Through art, we can have the opportunity of being in relationship with ourselves. We can choose to be in connection with the self. We can explore how we interact with the environment and with others. And there are many, many ways to do so. Why photography? Because it's easy, it can be supported by the automatic mode. It helps you to be here and now, to be mindful. At the same time, photography can be complex as it speaks about past, present and future. It is wide enough to comport a whole bunch of meanings, but especially because it can be fun. So this is how the idea of this project was born, to create a safe space where people can find a place where they can be themselves. At the same time, they are invited to explore their identities through photography. By that, you can find the mission of Tshfoku on its own words. D for development, Fo for photography, and Ko 
for consciousness. Also, you can find engaging, envolvimento, through writing, grafia, and using science to help in all of this. Desfoco, it is about that state of feeling cognitive nebulous. You know when you see everything and focus, blurry? Just before your mind becomes clear. By that, we offer a variety of services and activities aimed to promote self-knowledge and social change. We can meet ourselves in promoting safe spaces and strategies based on scientific knowledge. We use image and photography to do so. The kind of services we can offer can be divided into three main groups. First, we offer therapeutic workshops and courses for groups and also we plan to be able to work on individual mentoring with young people or adults. For now, we are only do, doing small workshops, but we would also like to focus on offering institutions complex programs to work with communities. And third, we also want to offer training opportunities for the ones who might want to work with this kind of methodologies. Of course, it is also part of our activities to promote theme-related events. As Susan Sontag said, it is, this is all mainly about understanding photography as a tool of power and to comprehend how we can do so. Christina Nunes say something that I considering I consider really important that is I give them the necessary directions so that their attention is drawn to their inner life and emotions, which I consider the raw material for arts. Then I leave them alone to work. Everyone, as they release the shutter, express as innate, innate determination to affirm their existence, their awareness, even if unconscious, that they are making art. In conclusion, I think we can use the words, the words of Paul Freire again. The social worker cannot fear freedom. A social worker cannot prescribe, manipulate. It cannot run away from communication. On the contrary, he should look for it, to live by it. The social worker who searches for change cannot consider the changing process a threat. And that's it. Thank you all. Please, I can invite you to follow us all on our social networks. Also, you feel free, please, to get in touch with us through email or private message. And also, give us your feedback if you'd like to. I hope you see you soon. Déjà!